Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Greg Rogers. I'm with Wiley Technologies. I'm here at IMS 2017 in Honolulu. Today, we're going to talk about quartz crystals, the G sensitivity of the quartz crystal, and ways we at Wiley use to mitigate these changes. These are a couple typical quartz crystals. Uh, quartz has a unique property in that it's very sensitive to movement. So as the quartz moves, the frequency will change. And what we have to do at Bliley to minimize this effect in our oscillators is use some various techniques to offset this. First we can talk about is the cut of the crystal. Most crystals today that are used in OCXOs with G compensation are using what's called SC cuts. They are somewhat less sensitive than the typical AT cuts, so I'll keep focus on that. There's two cuts that are primarily used in oscillators today. One is called the AT cut, and the other is called the SC cut. The SC cut is predominantly used in OCXOs, so I'll continue to focus on that, as well as the fact that it's a little bit better for G sensitivity than the AT cut. Now, in addition to the cut of the crystal, the cut of the quartz, we can use various holders such as this three-point mount. Now, typical uh, OCXOs in the past used a two-point mount, which meant that the crystal was more in a uh, cantilever mode, much like a diving board. And as it went through motion, the unit would vibrate horizontally or in the direction of the axis, which caused a disruption in, of the frequency. When we go to the three-point mount, it's a little bit stiffer, and thus there is less susceptibility to the vibration. We can't see this inside, but this is a four-point mount crystal, which has mounting in each of the 90-degree axis around the circle. With this mount, it is much more tolerant of vibration as well as shock. Now, we've discussed two ways in which we can minimize this G-sensitive effect. One is the, the cut of the quartz using the SC cut as opposed to the AT cut. The second is the holder. We can go from a two-point mount, which has a high sensitivity of vibration, to a four-point mount, which has a lower sensitivity. Uh, we at Bliley have developed techniques over the years which, where we can alter that additionally by changing the orientation of the quartz blank itself and in re change the way we paste or mount the blank. We've developed techniques where we can get a lower sensitive resonator if we adjust those two portions of the entire resonator. So once the resonator is finished and closed and is evacuated, holder, we can then go forward and we can actually measure the G sensitivity of each crystal on each axis on a vibration table. From there, we can essentially screen the ones that present a lower G sensitivity than those that are, I would call, a normal. This is done on oscillators where we, don't, we have a G sensitive requirement, but it's not that stringent. Through this screening process, we can sort out a typical 1 ppb per G sensitivity resonator uh, from those that might have as low as a 0.5 ppb per G sensitivity or even lower to, two, to 0.2 or 0.3 ppb per G. These will be selected in oscillators for lower G sensitive processing. The next form of nullifying the G-sensitivity properties of the quartz crystals, we can mount the entire oscillator onto a platform. The platform is located in this housing. This is our Poseidon One product. It's a, a mass or a plate which we mount on springs and we tune that using various uh, weights of the plate as well as springs and spring constants. And through that motion, we can offset some of that G sensitivity of the quartz crystal in our final oscillator, both in each of these three axes. So what resulting in is, is about a 0.2 ppb per G oscillator, which can be used in various airborne and mobile conductivity requirements. 
the issue with using the springs and the mass is that you still have an area of the bandwidth, the vibration bandwidth, from about 10 hertz to about 300 hertz that it's fairly untouched because of the size. In order to accomplish a full bandwidth of compensated oscillator, you would need a huge box with huge springs, and it's quite impractical in today's systems. Well, here, to compensate for this uncompensated bandwidth, we at Blyley have developed some electronic techniques where we use sensors mounted in three axes of performance where we can sense what's going on inside the oscillator and assume that the crystal's seeing the same thing, and we can interject signals to the crystal which will offset this change in frequency resulting in the low frequency vibrations. So ultimately, we, we've come up with a device that we've integrated all these uh, techniques to nullify the effects of the G sensitivity, what we call the Poseidon II. And it has both the quartz crystal being an SC cut, having a four-point mount, as we discussed, to nullify the effects of microphonics and smaller vibrations. We've integrated the large plate. We've actually re reduced the size of the plate because now we have electronic capability where we can focus the electronics up to a 350 or 400 hertz uh, sensitivity uh, nullification and we put it all in this product. Now, this is our Poseidon 2 and it's a, a turnkey solution for vibration G sensitivity compensation from 10 hertz to 2 kilohertz, the full bandwidth of the military frequency range. Again, my name is Greg Rogers. I'm with Blyley Technologies. Thanks for joining us here in Honolulu, Hawaii at IMS 2017. If you have any additional questions, or concerns about G sensitivity and how to offset this phenomena of the quartz, please contact me at Blyley Technologies. Check out our blogs or check out our website for individual products. Thank you.